Welcome back to MMA Icebreaker. I'm Frank Trick. Today we got Josh Corhagen getting ready to fight uh, yeah. against Anthony Nukajewani um, here on Legacy Fighting Championships 42 in Lake Charles, Louisiana at the Gold Nugget Casino. You're already in Lake Charles. That's home for you. That's right. That's where I've trained, where I've lived for about uh, 12 years now. So hometown of band, obviously, is going to go to you. Yeah. Um, did you sell a bunch of tickets? We did. We sold, uh, I mean, I don't even know how many, but yeah, we, we, we're going to have a few friends there for sure. <laughs> is uh, the after party going to be just as packed with all your friends? I, I assume so. I, I can't imagine more packed. You know, uh, my friends will come out for the I got more friends that will come out for a party than a fight, but I'll have a lot for the fight, too. <laughs> nice. Yeah, same, same thing here. More people yeah. like to show up for uh, the after party than anything else. Um, right fighting at home, it kind of depends on where you're at. But for me, I like to stay in my own bed. If I'm going to fight at home, I'm going to stay in my own bed, be around my kids, eat my own food, that whole game. Are you doing the same thing? I do the same thing, man. I love my bed. That's, uh, I've done it. I fought here uh, a couple different times. Even a, a pretty big fight for Bellator here before. and Just like... Uh, like sleeping in my own bed, uh, I have my niece around, my family's kind of around, you know, I'm a big family guy, so uh, it's just comfortable, you know, that's a, that's the big idea. Um, one set of mindset, I guess, going in and getting into fight mode, but I, I'd rather be at peace and get in there and uh, day of the fight, man, I'll, I'll turn it on. Now, a lot of guys will, you know, the, the, the promotions go ahead and pay for pay for a hotel room for you, so they're going to check into the hotel room on Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever, you know, or my, you know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, they check in the hotel, and then they stay home, but they use the hotel because... The fights at the hotel, they're going to stay and eat and drink at the hotel afterwards. So they kind of have a place to go to after the fight's over uh, as opposed to going home. Are you in that same kind of situation or are you going to go all the way home at night? Uh, I, don't, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, afterwards, I don't really know what I'll do. I'll kind of play it by ear. But uh, I'll definitely – I love the idea of getting away. I own a gym here and, and there's definitely a lot of – I'm not calling them distractions, but you know how it is. You know, you, you want to get in that zone. I want to sleep in my own bed for sure, but uh, I'll probably use uh, the room just to kind of get away, do some meditating, you know, pray and things like that. But um, for the most part, you know, home is where my heart is. That's where I want to stay. Well, let's talk about Anthony Nukajuwani, your opponent. You're on a two-fight slide. He's on a three-fight slide. Um, yeah. And each of you, you know, have won the fight before you started your losing, your losing streak and then lost the one before that. So it's like both of you are kind of up and down. Both of you, you know – Anthony's kind of fighting for his life at this point. Um, lost two fights in the UFC, lost his first fight in Legacy Fighting Championships. Now it's a question of can he can he get back on track? Uh, yeah. Do you does that make him more dangerous or less dangerous because he's lost so many in a row? You know, I think he's dangerous. Uh, I'll say that. Uh, period. You know, he's a good fighter. Um, you never know how, how camps go and, and how you take it. And I think more more than anything else, it's what you let a loss do to you. I know. Uh, I want to think dangerous because I know it makes me more dangerous. I know what it's done for me. It's brought me back to uh, really uh, almost uh, I put a lot of pressure on myself, and now I'm getting back, and I, I just get to remember how much I love fighting, and I love this sport. And uh, So I know I'm in a great place, uh, and I, I feel like I'm more dangerous. It, it made me train harder. It made me get back on track. You know, it did a lot for me, and, uh, you know, I hope it did that for him too. Um, so we'll see how it turns out. You know, I hate to – Sometimes we recognize success and failure with win and loss, and uh, I don't know how, how he would, but uh, hopefully it gave him back that fire and that martial arts feel. I know it did for me, man, and I, I'm ready for this. Uh, I can't wait to fight again, and, and that's been a big change of pace from almost uh, feeling like I have to win, fighting in some, maybe some fights that I thought I should win. You know, really, uh, you know, it's all just a, a learning process, and I'm, I'm enjoying that journey, but I feel like I'm better because of the losses. So... I don't want to bring up negative, you know, yeah. like, like right on the negative, but you went 6-0 and when you started your, your pro career. And then you had a loss. Uh, Cosmo Alexandre in the Bellator, Bellator was your first loss. Yeah. You beat Webb, you lose Adar, you lose Ali, you lose Anoka Jawani. Which one, worst case scenario, which one would be harder to deal with? Is the Alexandre fight with a harder one to deal with because it was your first loss? Or would the Noka Jawani fight now be a harder one to deal with because it's the third one in a row and because you're in such a better place? You know, uh, it's a good question. Uh, you know, the Cosmo one really uh, hit me hard. I'd fought him in my first pro fight, so I'd beat him. And then uh, that's one of the ones I fought here in Lake Charles. And then I went back and fought him where he was training in Florida. And, uh, you know, I felt like uh, no excuses that he outperformed me, no doubt. But my mind wasn't right. My, I felt like uh, there's a lot of things going on. And then even the last two losses, you know, uh, even maybe a little bit of pride got uh, – 
uh, exposed a little bit more. And, you know, I feel like I'm in the best place ever now. Mm -hmm. um, and, and again, I, I don't necessarily know how, how it would feel to lose the Jaquani, but I, I want to make sure that I don't look back and say, hey, I made that, that mistake. I made this mistake. I want to fight. I want to go to war with Jaqu in Jaquani. You know, I, I, I want to test myself. You know, I want to enjoy it. And, and I, I look back on a couple fights before, the ones that I've lost, and I can, can pinpoint things, maybe even camp, pre-camp, um, in the fight specifically, little mistakes that maybe I made uh, that, I, that I regretted that I made. Not that I lost, that I made these mistakes. I'd like to get in there. And, and and fight and, and just enjoy it and, and really do what I'm capable of. And so if I did that and I lost, uh, I think this one would be a little easier to take. You know, and, and Jaquan is a great fighter, world class striker. You know, um, and I plan to test it. You know, we're gonna strike. And so uh, you know, I'm re I'm ready to be tested, but I I, I want to get in there and I want to be satisfied more than than win or lose. But uh, you know, I, I believe that the win is where I'm at at that, that level. I believe that I can fight with world-class strikers, and I believe I can beat them. Um, so I'm ready to do that. And this is for the folks at home that are listening in, that, that losing a fight when things aren't right is so much more hard to deal with than losing a fight that you gave everything you had, did everything correctly, and that guy was just better than you that night. That fight you yeah. can deal with as a loss. Like, hey, I got beat. I was, I was not the better man that night, but then going into a yeah, fight. Yeah. Like for you, for Cosmo, you're like, I just wasn't all there, and I got beat. That one sucks. If you had a chance yeah. to fight Cosmo again, you do it again then for sure. Oh yeah, oh, okay. you know uh, I think he's going a little bit higher. I'm a lot smaller than I was then, but mm -hmm. that's a fight I'd like to take. Yeah, you know, I'd like to do that trilogy fight for sure. I know he's with Legacy. You know, it's yeah. it, it, don't put too much plan on anything, but uh, uh, it's definitely something that's been on my heart. It's, it's the only it's the rematch that I won. I've lost my last two. Can definitely pinpoint mistakes that I made there. But the, the Cosmo is one that I thought was a little bit more internal, and I'm and for sure that third fight would be great. Well, I've got Mick and Colin's phone number, so I'll, I'll give him a little hey, call. Hey, you, know, <laughs> you know, put a bug in there here, you know. Well, let's, let's get on a positive note. You're going to fight yeah. Noko Jawani, you're going to finish him, you're going to win. Yeah. How do you see yourself finishing this fight? He's a world-class striker. He's great on his feet. He's been working diligently on his jiu-jitsu, working yeah. diligently on his, on his wrestling game with uh, John Fitz over his camp. Yeah. You know, where do you think you're going to be able to stop him? What, where do you think it's going to be? Is it going to be on the ground or is it going to be on the feet? You know, I, I don't try to you know, make too many predictions as much, uh, you know, same idea. You know, you work at, at all levels. You know, you want to you have uh, answers to, to any equation and, and things that you want to overcome. But uh, I don't want to predict or put too much emphasis on it. But I, I think it will be striking. You know, that's where, that's where my um, – when, when you say I finish him, and you ask how in my mind it, it's it's throwing a, a counter strike or, or even some offensive combinations that I've really worked on. You know, I'm just I want to I want to strike. I want that's I love the, I love to strike. Uh, he does too. Um, uh, potentially the ground game game comes into play and, and maybe the finish is there and that's uh, that'd be great too. Um, but I, if it happens the way I want it to happen, I'm standing up and he falls down. It's going to be a great fight. I think both of you guys have a lot of action. Both of you have something to prove. You, obviously, the hometown crowd, and also show that you're spiritually and mentally more aware than you have been in the last couple of fights. And like you said, for you, to find that satisfaction inside that cage, you have a lot to prove. Anthony's got to prove that he, he's able to, to jump back from Legacy, back from the big leagues. That, that's his big goal, coming to Legacy, is that he, he chose it specifically because if the UFC comes calling, he can go back and go up to the UFC. I yeah. think that'd be a great move for him. So he's got, definitely got something to prove. And I believe that if he loses this next fight, he might have to reevaluate his training habits, his training partners, his coaches, because now he's going to be on a four-fight losing streak. Does that ever come in a factor where you're like, you legitimately can change a man's fortune? If you beat a guy up bad enough, you might change his fortune to the point where he has to stop fighting and move on to something else. Does that ever enter into your mindset? Yeah, I mean, it has. You know, that's one thing, too, that, you know, I'm a devout Christian, man, and I love people. And when it comes right down to it, you know, I, you know, I love Anthony. You know, I wish the best for his career. Um, I, but I also know how how the world works, and, and sometimes the best things can come from the worst things, so to speak. And I know how much emphasis we put on fighting, how how hard you have to train to do this, how how much this is your world when you're in it, and, and when it gets taken from you and things don't go the right way, you almost uh, evaluate your self worth based on what you do in a cage and. Uh, and um, I think where I'm at now is I don't do that anymore. You know, uh, my, my self-worth is outside of it. There's a lot of things uh, uh, in my life that are more important. Uh, so I hate to do that to somebody, but I also 
um, I think there's there's positives that that will come around the world that I can't see, and um, so that's what that's what my hope is that that we both leave the cage better men or, or find a way to become better men because of it. And that, that's I'm at peace with that. Do you do you sometimes have a hard time dealing with your Christian beliefs and the violence of MMA? Where you're like, I gotta this guy will not go away. He will not stop coming at me. Yeah. I've got to win this fight. It's really close. I really have to put a hurting on him. I really got to try to break something or I really got to try to put him unconscious because this is it's not going to end well if I don't do that. Like self-protection come, comes into a factor. Like I'm going to get hurt if I don't hurt him first. Do you yeah. Have, after the fight, I know not during the fight. You don't. It doesn't bother you during the fight. But afterwards, yeah. do you have a, a guilt problem or have to sit down and talk to somebody about it because there's, there's such a – a, a, it's, a, it's an uneven scale when, when you're dealing with this, of, of being a devout Christian and then having to deal with the violence of MMA. Like, do you ever have to deal with that? Does it ever bother you after the fights are over? I think for sure, you know, it, it, especially early on. And uh, my biggest thing that I, I feel now is that you know, I've prayed. In fact, uh, my f second loss after Cosmo, I got choked out and, and actually went to sleep for a couple minutes or a minute and a half or something. And, and there's a lot of panic going around in the ring, you know, yeah. kind of had my own personal experience with that. But, you know, uh, the one thing I took from that is, you know, when it comes right down to the God, God's got it. And, and I have to put my faith in there, you know. And I, and so I, I trust, I pray for them, I pray for their safety, you know. Uh, I think that um, through pain and through things in this life, we, we do grow stronger because of it. You know, and more than anything else, I, I love what this sport has done for me spiritually. How, what it's made me become, you know. I, I've actually read it a couple times, uh, somebody hit you, turn the other cheek. And I've really thought about how do I apply this in, in my life, and, and I want to put my personality into my fighting as well, and that's kind of a huge thing for me. And uh, you know, and it's really got to a point where I, I want people to make a mistake. I want to play in chess. I don't want to go kill your king. I want to trap your king. I want you to make the move that causes your king to go. And, and in essence, uh, I want even more so. It's more of a spiritual thing. You know, I know that times when I've been angered anger or mad or frustrated or more than anything else feared because maybe somebody's caught me I've kind of got that rage I want to get them back and I, I, I feel like I've learned my lesson and will continue to learn that lesson from that uh, have an intent you know Jesus talks a lot about uh, all the law is summed up in loving people and, and what that means to me is everything you do is summed up why with why you're doing it and uh, so even throwing a punch, I get to impact a lot of people. I talk to kids at school, man. I get to go there. Man, it's just built a great platform for me. And, um, and I'm not throwing punches because I don't like them. I'm not throwing punches out of fear anymore or out of anger. You know, I'm genuinely throwing punches out of love, man. We're just playing chess, and, and we both choose to, to grow ourselves through this, man, and, and, and we're going to go test each other. And, uh, man, we're just playing chess, and we might bleed at the end. You know, that's all it is really for me. That's what I've, uh, I've defined it as, and I like it like that. Well, Love Josh, the game. Your, your fights are becoming chess matches. The more and more, every time you fight, the more and more you improve. And, and I hope this one lives up to the hype that I think it should. I think it's a great match make by Mick and Colin. I think they put a great yeah. job together here getting you and Anthony together. And it's going to be fireworks. And hopefully everybody turns in and watches it on June 26th. It's going to be a great yeah, right. fight. I can't wait to see it. Yeah, man, I'm excited, dude. I, uh, it's going to be a great fight, man. Uh, uh, I'm excited to take part in it. I love that it's in my hometown, but, you know, one way or another, it's just going to be one of the ones you get to disappear for 15 minutes and, and come out the other side and, and see what happened, man. I can't wait for it. Beautiful. Josh, thanks so much for coming on here. Appreciate it. We appreciate coming here to Emory Osbaker, and we'll definitely be talking to you again soon. Cool. Thank you, for it, Frank. Have a good one, brother.